What if the strongest evidence for alien life wasn't some grainy UFO footage or a signal from deep space, but a scent? On April 17, 2025, the James Webb Space Telescope locked onto a planet 124 light-years away and picked up something no one expected, a gas called dimethyl sulfide, DMS. On Earth, that gas is only produced by life. This isn't a vague signal or a chemical anomaly. What Webb found has a 99.7% chance of being biological. And it might be the clearest sign we've ever seen that we're not alone in the universe. But to understand how we got here, how we found what might be the first planet better suited for life than Earth, we need to go back a decade. It all started in 2015. NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, during its second light mission, scanned a patch of space and discovered more than 1,200 exoplanets. Among them was one that stood out, a rocky world orbiting a small dim star called K218. It was massive, over twice the size of Earth, but located in its star's habitable zone, the sweet spot where temperatures allow liquid water. Soon after, Spitzer and the HARP spectrograph in Chile confirmed the planet's density and temperature suggested something remarkable the potential for a deep ocean. A planet not just with liquid water, but a world that might be completely covered by it. Then came 2019. Hubble trained its lens on K218b and made a game-changing discovery. Water vapor in the atmosphere. Suddenly, the idea of a distant ocean world didn't just seem possible, it seemed likely. But the real breakthrough didn't come until the arrival of the most advanced space observatory in history. In 2023, the James Webb Space Telescope, humanity's most powerful eye in space, locked onto K218b and picked up something completely unexpected, dimethyl sulfide, DMS. It's a complex molecule, but here's the simple truth. On Earth, DMS is only known to come from life, specifically tiny marine organisms that release it as they break down. If you've ever smelled the sharp, salty scent of the ocean, that's DMS in the air. At first, scientists were cautious. The initial detection came from a single infrared instrument and distinguishing DMS from other gases, like methane, in that range is notoriously difficult. It could have been a data glitch or wishful thinking. So they did what science demands. They checked again. In April 2025, Webb scanned the planet a second time using a completely different sensor this time in the mid-infrared spectrum. And once again, the result came back clear. DMS. Still there. Only this time, the concentration was staggering, over a thousand times greater than what we see on Earth. That number alone raised eyebrows. But it was the nature of the gas that set off alarm bells. DMS is unstable. It doesn't linger in an atmosphere. Sunlight and oxygen tear it apart in a matter of days. So for it to be floating around the skies of K218b, something has to be making it constantly. And that leads to one unavoidable question. What's producing it? Unlike methane or carbon dioxide, gases that can come from volcanoes or chemical reactions, DMS doesn't have a non-living explanation. It's a biological signal, a chemical flare. And if it's really there, in those quantities, then something on that distant planet isn't just surviving, it's thriving. K218b is unlike any planet in our solar system. It's nearly nine times heavier than Earth and more than twice as wide. But what really sets it apart isn't its size, it's what might be hiding beneath its surface. Scientists now believe K218b could be a Hycian world, a theoretical class of planet first proposed in 2021. Picture a massive sphere completely covered in deep oceans, wrapped in a thick, hydrogen-rich atmosphere. Conditions like that could create a greenhouse effect, keeping the water warm, even if the planet's farther from its star than Earth is from the Sun. But here's where things get complicated. K218b orbits a red dwarf, a star that's cooler and dimmer than our Sun. Its orbit is extremely tight, only about 2.5 times closer than Mercury is to the Sun. And yet, because its star emits less radiation, the planet receives roughly the same amount of heat and light as Earth. 
That balance, while delicate, puts it squarely in the habitable zone. Adding to the intrigue, Webb found no traces of ammonia in the planet's atmosphere. That's a big deal. If K218b really is an ocean world, ammonia would dissolve into the water, vanishing from the atmosphere. Exactly what the telescope observed. But not everyone agrees. Some researchers think K218b might be more like a mini-Neptune, a small gas giant with no solid surface at all. If true, the chances of life plummet. Others warn that the deep oceans could be too hot, possibly boiling from the immense pressure below the hydrogen-rich skies. And without a solid surface, without a stable ocean bed, complex life may never take root. Right now, K218b sits in a strange in-between. It might be a tropical water world, teeming with life beneath steamy clouds, or a gas-wrapped inferno, utterly lifeless despite the promising signs. And yet, the DMS is still there. Something is making it. The planet might be difficult to categorize, but it's impossible to ignore. If life really does exist on K218b, it almost certainly wouldn't look anything like life on Earth. The planet's deep oceans, crushing pressure, and hydrogen-rich atmosphere would force evolution down a very different path. We might be looking at a world of extremophiles, organisms like those that survive around Earth's hydrothermal vents, where temperatures soar past 100 degrees Celsius and sunlight never reaches. Down there, life doesn't need photosynthesis. It feeds on chemistry, using hydrogen, sulfur, and other elements to power its metabolism. Now scale that up. Imagine entire ecosystems of microbes thriving in dark pressurized oceans, feeding on volcanic heat and chemical gradients. These wouldn't just be survivors. They'd be perfectly adapted to the alien conditions. But what if life on K218b didn't stop at the microbial level? Some scientists believe larger, more complex organisms could evolve in such an environment. In a hydrogen atmosphere, less dense than Earth's, the buoyancy is higher. That could allow creatures to grow far larger than their Earth-based counterparts. Massive jellyfish-like beings drifting through the water. Balloon-bodied animals floating in the thick atmosphere itself. Life that glows with bioluminescence, not to see, but to communicate, attract, or hunt. And the deeper you go, the stranger it gets. At depths of 10 to 15 miles, the pressure could reach over 2,000 times what we experience at sea level. For life to exist there, it would need extreme adaptations, like dense, flexible skeletons made of biopolymers we've never seen, or tough outer shells capable of withstanding monstrous forces without shattering. Some organisms might look like armored sea creatures with overlapping plates of biological alloy. Others could be amorphous, more like blobs of conscious reactive tissue than anything resembling a familiar animal. And yet, if DMS is real, if it's being produced at scale, then life there isn't just possible. It's already adapting, already thriving, possibly watching, from a world we can only imagine. So, how confident are scientists that this is real? Right now, the probability that DMS exists in K218b's atmosphere is estimated at 99.7%. In scientific terms, that's what's called Three Sigma confidence, and it matters a lot. To put that in perspective, the initial signs of water on K218b back in 2019 were just one sigma, about 68% confidence. Not bad, but far from solid. At three sigma, you're approaching what many scientists consider strong evidence. It's not proof, but it's close. But for a claim as explosive as this, potential alien life, three sigma isn't enough. The gold standard is five sigma, that's 99.9994% certainty. It's the level of confidence required to announce major discoveries in physics, like the detection of the Higgs boson in 2012. And until we hit that threshold, no one is declaring life, not officially. That's why researchers are proceeding with caution. They know what's at stake. False hope could derail years of progress. But quietly, many are already preparing, planning follow-up observations, running models, rechecking the data with different instruments, different teams, different methods. Because if DMS is confirmed with five sigma certainty, 
and if it can be traced to a biological origin, then everything changes. It would mean that for the first time in history, humanity has found proof that life exists beyond Earth. Not just a maybe, not just a theory, proof. And the most mind-bending part? It wouldn't be at the edge of the galaxy, not halfway across the universe. It would be in our cosmic neighborhood, just 124 light years away, barely a smudge on the map of the cosmos. K218b might be our best lead, but it's far from the only one. All across the galaxy, we're finding planets that challenge our understanding of what habitable really means. Take Tea Garden B, for example, just 12.5 light years away, basically in our cosmic backyard. It's a rocky planet with temperatures that might range from freezing to warm, depending on where you stand. That's because Tea Garden B is tidally locked. One side always faces its star, the other is plunged in darkness. But right along the dividing line, in the eternal twilight zone, conditions could be just right for life. Or look at Kepler-1649c, 301 light years away. It's almost identical to Earth in size and temperature. It orbits a quiet red dwarf, and scientists believe it could have liquid water in the narrow band between night and day. It's remote, yes, but eerily familiar. Then there's Toi 700d, one of the most Earth-like exoplanets discovered so far. It's stable, it's quiet, and it might not be tidally locked, meaning it could have regular day-night cycles, something that greatly increases the chances for complex life. It's just over 100 light years away, orbiting a remarkably calm star. And there are stranger worlds still. J1407b has a ring system 200 times larger than Saturn's, so massive it would dominate our skies if it were in our solar system. WASP-76b is a nightmare planet, where iron literally vaporizes and rains down as molten metal. GJ504b glows bright pink from the leftover heat of its formation. The deeper we look, the weirder it gets. But the more we find, habitable worlds, possible oceans, atmospheric biosignatures, the more one thing becomes clear. K218b might be the first planet where we detect alien life, but it won't be the last. For centuries we've stared into the sky and wondered if we were alone. Now, for the first time, we may have an answer. A planet 124 light years away is emitting a gas that, on Earth, only life produces. That gas is fragile. It shouldn't be there unless something is making it, constantly, in massive quantities. And it's coming from a planet that may be wrapped in warm oceans beneath thick clouds, orbiting a calm red star in the perfect zone for habitability. We're not talking about alien invaders or ancient ruins. We're talking about microbes, chemistry, pressure, adaptation, life that may have taken hold in an environment completely alien to us, and yet somehow familiar. If confirmed, the implications are staggering. It would mean Earth is not unique, that life doesn't need Earth-like conditions to exist, that biology might be woven into the fabric of the cosmos, waiting in oceans beneath hydrogen skies, in twilight zones on locked planets in chemical stews around distant stars. It would mean that life is not the exception, it's the rule. And maybe, just maybe, somewhere out there in the warm black depths of K218b's oceans, something is moving, something is living, something is watching its own sky, just as we're watching theirs. Not science fiction, not theory, just the universe, finally answering back.